Hi, this is Pastor Rick from Ella J, Georgia, and I wanted to come here and uh, just talk to you today about living on the brighter side. Um, we know in John 10, 10, uh, the scripture says that the thief cometh but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundant. And I think that the Lord Jesus wants us to have the abundance of life through our relationship with him. And I think he wants that abundance to be revealed or reflected in our countenance. And depending on where, what your countenance reflects, even as a believer determines whether or not you project a magnetism that draws people to Christ or a miserable uh, countenance that repels people uh, from you and from, of course, then your, your Savior. I, I always remember the Bible says that they took note that the disciples had been with Jesus. There was something about them. Maybe it's the Nehemiah 8.10 where it says that it's the joy of the Lord that's our strength. I mean, after all, knowing God gives me a blessed assurance. And that blessed assurance allows me then to see the brighter side of things even if I have to reach into the promises of Scripture and reach into the future and know that even if I'm experiencing a difficult time now, joy comes in the morning. A glory is after this life. But I have, according to Colossians chapter 1 and verse 27, Christ in me. That's the hope of glory. And so the way we live our life, the countenance, the attitude of our heart, um, it all is a testimony, either positively or negatively for the Lord. I think about Psalm 126, verse 3, that says, and this is what I think believers ought to be meditating on, the Lord hath done great things for us, whereby we will be glad. Um, whether you're a believer or not, you can have a healthy soul and you can have an unhealthy soul. The unhealthy soul is always focused on the negative, bemoans, bewails, uh, even their spiritual condition. They, they couch in negative terms and they continuously talk about the conflict on every hand, the deep afflictions that are binding on them, the, the, ad, uh, the adversities that are constantly a part of their life. And they're just seen with a cloud over their head. They, they sort of have a the Eeyore personality, that everything's doom and gloom. And whether we mean to or not, we paint a certain picture of God and what God does in our life or doesn't do in our life that causes us to be happy or miserable. On the other hand, a healthy soul says, you know what? I'm going to honor the Lord with my testimony. I'm going to speak of his mercies every day and that they are renewed every day and, and they are new for every circumstance. I'm going to speak like the psalmist in Psalm 40 in verse 2, and I'm going to say, the Lord has brought me out of a horrible pit. He's taken me out of the miry clay. He's set my feet upon the rock and he's established my goings and he has put a new song in my mouth. Verse 3 of chapter 40 says, even praise unto our God. Now that's painting a, a rather glorious, glowing picture of God instead of a neg negative one. Matter of fact, I think that's part of the attention, intention because that same verse in chapter 3 of Psalm 40 says, many shall see it and fear and they shall trust in the Lord. Man, when our heart trusts in the Lord and we believe on him, we can rejoice at all times. It will give strength to our heart, and it will bring a brightness to our countenance that folks will take note of. Psalm 5 and verse number 11 says this, But let all those that put their trust in the Lord rejoice. Let us shout for joy, because thou, Lord, defendest them. Let them also love thy name, be joyful in thee. Trust in God always brings us through the storm and leads us to the rainbows of promise and the sunshine of renewed days. Psalm 1611 says, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is the fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures evermore. And so that tells us that as we learn to enter into God's presence in our devotion, personal worship time, 
we can't do anything but become joyful because joy, fullness of joy is in his presence. And as the New Testament says, it is a joy unspeakable and it is full of glory. And so if you're today walking under a cloud, I encourage you to be like David. Cry out to God and say, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. And according to Psalm 126, verse 5, those that sow in tears, they shall reap in joy. I love Psalm 66 because it sort of paints uh, the children of God going through some difficult times and how the enemies were overwhelming them and they had to pass through the deep waters and the fire. But then in Psalm 66, the end of the verse 12 says, but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place, a prosperous place, an abundant place is the idea there. And then in verse number 13 of that same Psalm, it results in a great testimony to the faithfulness of God. So listen, start living on the brighter side of life. But in order to do that, man, spend your time in the presence of the Lord. Make sure you devote yourself to your devotion times, to the study of God's Word. Look to His promises and live for His glory. God bless you and have a great day.